Good morning. Welcome as we come to worship on this day the Lord has made. Um, I stood here last week and announced we had a memorial service last Sunday for Ron Cease. And then on Friday, we, uh, Wednesday, we had a funeral for Dick Mangus. And now I announce today the viewing of Sue Dar's mother. She passed away Friday night. So Kathy Butler, uh, no, Thursday night, excuse me. Uh, viewing will be at Hogger Ziegler today from 2 to 5, and the funeral is at 11 o'clock tomorrow at Hogger Ziegler Funeral Home. And please keep Sue and Jeff and the rest of the family in your prayers. Prayers continue for Skip Petrie as he continues his treatments. We want to thank all who came out to see the live nativity, and a big thank you to all those who came out to help with the live nativity. St. Thomas is very well represented in setting up and tearing down and the acting and all the behind the scene things. Um, our numbers were probably down this year, I would have a feeling, but it was still I think we had about a thousand come through. So it wasn't, wasn't for naught. It was uh, kind of had a change yesterday when that front moved through. Uh, we had a couple outdoor scenes and um, that wasn't possible once five o'clock came and we had those high winds. So uh, we condensed the last scene and made everything work. God always provides. Uh, the Christmas mailbox is in the Northex, uh, waiting for your Christmas cards. Many have done that already. Um, the last day to bring in Christmas cards is next Sunday. The box goes away then, because come Christmas Eve, we don't want to be having, there's a left to do Christmas Eve, and we need to focus on the birth of Christ. Plus, we want any shut-in cards here next week so we can take them out while we're caroling next Sunday. So that brings me up that we're caroling next Sunday. We'll be meeting here at 4 o'clock. So if you want to come along, please be in the parking lot over here at 4, and uh, we'll go out and have a, a great time. This evening, the Kids Club will meet at 5. We'll be having Christmas play practice uh, after church today and to this evening. Uh, catechism is at 5.30, and Luther League meets at 6.30. They're having their Christmas party. Uh, the children will present their program next Sunday during the worship hour. Christmas Eve, we will have two services. 4.30 and 7. They're going to be the exact same service, but splitting up so we can keep uh, the crowd down with the COVID numbers going up. And communion will be offered only in the parking lot at the 4.30 one. Well, no, let me rephrase that. Communion will be in here, too. It's not going to be only in the parking lot, but it'll be offered in the parking lot at the 4.30 service only. Um, Two more announcements, just housekeeping chores. Your 2022 uh, church envelopes are in the table as you go out the narthex to your right. And the, uh, if you have, please, before you leave, just check in the back Sunday school room to see if you have any Christmas cards under your name. I think about everybody here might have a card, so you need to check that out. Are there any concerns or other prayers that need to come in front of the congregation? Yes, and after Caroline, we're going down to Tim's house for a party. So it's always a good time there, too. So if you, if you don't want to carol, come any house so you can party. <laughs> any other concerns or announcements? If not, let's quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship by listening to the prelude.
Please rise. We gather for worship as we should live our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no, <clears throat> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. <clears throat> if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and cannot, and the trust is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please kneel if you're able. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as we sing 633 in the Blue Hymnal.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, give ears to our prayers and lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading for the third Sunday in Advent begins at the third chapter of Zephaniah, starting at the 14th verse. Sing aloud, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall never again, never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all your peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Once felt worried, 
are, and sad are now beating with gladness in our God. For Christ is born, the time has come. All that has been darkened by sin for years has been replaced with forgiveness, grace, and hope. The earth rejoices in new life in Christ. With Mary and Joseph, who trusted in God, we celebrate the promised one. The gloom that so often penetrated our world and now lives in, and our lives now has no place to be. The Lord has turned our mourning into dancing. Let our voices rejoice in the birth of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who came with good news. Let the good news that we are saved by the birth, life, death, and resurrection of our Savior and life in our time on this earth. We spend our days in joy for the presence of Jesus in our lives always. In him there is true gladness. The second reading begins in the fourth chapter of Philippians, beginning at the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this morning according to the Gospel of Luke, the seventh chapter. The disciples of John reported all these things to him, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed their sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowd concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaking by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in the king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When all the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves not having been baptized by him. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation, and what, market, and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played a flute for you, and you did not dance. We danced a dirge, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist had come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he is a demon. He has a demon. The son of man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. The Gospel of our Lord. Would you be seated and the children come forth at this time?
Good to have you all here. So, how soon is Christmas? 13 days. I knew you guys would know that. So, what's the banner in the front of the Advent we say today? Joy. So today we're talking about joy. We had hope and peace and now joy. And today we're talking about candy canes. Yes? Well, shh, shh, yes, a candy maker wanted to show the true meaning of Christmas. But it's interesting because we have joy today, and an up, down, side down candy cane can stand for Jesus, which should make us joyful, right? All J's. But yes, a candy cane maker made the candy cane to tell the story of Christmas. And there's a little saying on the back of your card today. Each time I share a candy cane or hang one on the tree, it calls to mind the gracious gift my dear Lord gave to me. I know God loves me very much. He gave me his own son. The letter J is for Jesus. He's God's gift for everyone. The pure white of the cane means Christ was pure of sin. The red stripes says he gave his life so I might live again. He gives me guidance every day. He shepherds me, it's true. Two canes together form a heart. My gift, dear Lord, to you. So, when you eat a candy cane, it's just not something sweet. It tells us the story of Jesus, how he came to save us. It's white because he had no sin. It's red because he shed his blood. It's hard because he's, he's the rock, exactly. You did very good, Avery. Maybe you should do the children's sermon next week. <laughs> well, we're, you guys are doing your play next week, so you will be, you'll be doing the sermon next week, all of this. Yeah, that's, shh. <laughs> you have a good excuse. So, when you see a candy cane, enjoy eating its sweetness, because God gives us Jesus to sweeten our lives, too. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, look upon these children. May they know the true reason for this season, that it is your Son, Jesus Christ, being born in a manger, who has come to save us all. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's children say? Amen. Uh, better. All God's children say? Amen. I think we can do better. All God's children say? Amen. Better. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and get a cane and I'll see you after church for practice. Before I can start on this week's gospel lesson, we need to review last week's gospel lesson and the sermon. If you remember in the sermon last week, I talked about a young Pharisee who got up early every morning to get dressed very tediously to make sure he looked absolutely perfect, for he was a Pharisee. Now, he had very fine robes made from the tightly woven cloth. His outer garments had beautiful long prayer tassels, and he felt he did this all for God, that it wasn't to put on a show or wasn't to be paid attention to for himself. But as he goes to the marketplace that day and the crowds weren't there and there was no one shouting, Rabbi, Rabbi, or showing him honor and respect, he began to wonder. As he met up with the other Pharisees and as they learned most of the town's folks were out of the city across the desert to the River Jordan, they decided to go see for themselves who this man that they called John the Baptist is. They go out and they're shocked because this man claiming to be a preacher doesn't look very respectable in their viewpoint. He wears camel skins with a leather belt tied around his waist. His hair is very unruly. He wears, eats honey and locusts. 
They thought he was rather strange. And many of the common folks did too. As we hear when we watch The Chosen, Simon Peter called him Creepy John. But as they're listening to him, this young Pharisee starts wondering about things. He starts wondering why the people are coming out all the way to hear John and being willing to confess their sins to him when he's been a rabbi and a Pharisee and people always just put a good show on for him and never tell them their sins or ask what to do. Then John, seeing the Pharisees, called him a brood of vipers. The Pharisees were indignant with that. So upset, they decided to go back to Jerusalem. But the young man kept pondering. The people in the crowd kept pondering too, and they were wondering, could this John the Baptist be the one, the Messiah that has been foretold through the Old Testament? But John tells them he baptizes with water, the water to wash away their sins, a baptism of repentance. But one is to come who will baptize them with the Holy Spirit and fire. John was very firm who he thought the Messiah was going to be and how he was going to act. Jesus comes to John to be baptized, and John says, I'm not worthy to even untie your sandals, and you come to be baptized by me. And as Jesus is baptized and he comes out of the water, the heavens open up, and the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove. And the voice of God speaks loudly, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And John says, now my ministry must decrease as Jesus' increase. Now, let's fast forward from that reading last week to today's gospel reading. Jesus, after being baptized, spent 40 days in the wilderness being tempted. Then he went about doing his business, calling his disciples, teaching about the kingdom of God, driving demons out of people, making the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf to hear, even raising a few people from the dead. And then we come to the reading where we have John sending out his two disciples Jesus is attracting great crowds by this time. People want to come see him, especially those afflicted with illnesses or other ailments. As the disciples come to Jesus, they say, John has sent us. He wants to know, are you the one or should we look for another? Apparently, John wasn't too sure. Jesus wasn't acting the way he expected him to be acting. You see, John the Baptist, just like many disciples and like many of the people that day, was expecting a Messiah that was going to come and kick the Romans out, to be very political, to establish an independent government of Israel again, to make them strong. But nowhere in the Bible, in the Old Testament, does it say that's what Messiah is going to do. He's going to come to bring peace. He's going to come to be the wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace. But they twisted it around over the generations to mean something so different. So John wasn't too sure if Jesus was the one that everyone claimed he was. He grew up with John. Their mothers were cousins. They were about the same age. John was just six months older. They couldn't understand, he couldn't understand why Jesus wasn't getting about the business that they were raised to do. And John, Jesus tells John's disciples to go back and tell John what he had seen. The lame was walking, the blind could see, the deaf hearing was restored, demons were driven out. And as they left, Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, don't think anything less of John. Jesus had a high respect for John and he understood just like all of us, none of us understand the ways of God. And he asked the crowd, why did you go out to see a prophet? For that's what John was. 
He was the last of the great prophets, a carryover from the Old Testament. Did you go out to see someone in fine clothing and eating rich food? For that's the exact opposite of what John was. And then Jesus proves that we want things our way and we're never satisfied with how they are because John came dressed kind of rubbly, eating bugs and honey and acting strange. And the authorities said he had a demon. Jesus came being with society, acting proper, eating with the Pharisees, eating with the Gentiles, eating with tax collectors and sinners. He drank, he ate, and they called him a glutton and a drunkard. There was no pleasing the authorities. And often in our life today, there's no pleasing Christians. Do we expect God to be different than what we experience? Do we want to reinvent God and his son, Jesus Christ? When we pray, do we start out saying, Dear Lord, would you do this and this and this? Or life would be just fine if, I, if you would make this happen. We should pray, as we heard Elliot read from Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. You can let your request be known, but you don't tell God what to do. You pray as we do in the Lord's Prayer, Lord, your will be done. This Advent Sunday, we need to be filled with joy as we await the baby in the manger. This Advent Sunday, we need to be filled with joy knowing that Christ will come again. Until that time, we have to pray his will be done. Let God guide us through this life. And let God be God. Amen. Let us rise as we sing hymn number 25.
by confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, help us not to expect you to do our will, but let us realize that your will will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Guiding Spirit, please give guidance and wisdom to church leaders. We especially pray for our Bishop Dan Salbo, his staff, and his wife Mary. We pray for our mission district. Be with all pastors and lay people who stand on your word. Lord, in your mercy. King of the universe, we ask you to give wisdom and guidance to President Joe Biden. We ask for you to be with Governor Tom Wolf, with our legislators and local elected officials. May they all place their faith in you. Lord, in your mercy. God, our protector, be with all those serving in the military, especially those who are in harm's way. We also pray for first responders, our police officers and firefighters along with those serving as EMTs and in the ERs. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, be with those going through disasters, those that are by nature and those who are man-made. We especially pray for all those affected by the tornadoes, especially in Kentucky, and the death and devastation that has occurred. Lord, in your mercy. Healing spirit, be of those who need your healing hand, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We especially pray for Skip Petrie, Charlotte Lohr, Carl Wilner III, Libby LaDuff, Bill Hood, Donna Berkeybau, as she has surgery this week, Carrie DeNorsey, Jane Helmers, Barry Moyer, Mark Huffman, Marsha DeKnightson and Dick Haichu and all those we name in our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort be with those who mourn and grieve for their loved ones. Give your comfort till the day we are all united in your heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and guide us today and forevermore. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 39.